So a new report now claims that employees at the IRS were, quote, acutely aware that the Obama administration wanted to crack down on conservative groups. A House committee released this 2010 agency staff report saying, quote, as prominent politicians publicly urged the IRS to take action on tax exempt groups engaged in legal campaign intervention activities. Founding the existence of the Tea Party in general is part of the findings in that report. And joining me now, Congressman Darrell Issa is the chairman of the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee behind this report. Uh, Good to have you with us, Congressman. Thank you for being well, here. Thanks for, cover thanks for covering this important issue. Uh, clearly, free speech was attacked by the IRS, and that's what our report shows. And quite frankly, that's what the public needs to know. So, of course, uh, your critics will, will immediately say there's no link to the White House in this report. Your, your report does not find any connection or any directive that came from the White House to separate out these groups for uh, more intense scrutiny. Well, you know, when the president shook his finger and chastised the Supreme Court in the House, uh, the well of the House, uh, during a State of the Union speech over Citizens United, he began a process of making it very clear that he had a problem with the court's interpretation of free speech. And as he and others began to show their, that they were offended by what the Tea Party was saying, in other words, he respected free speech if progressives said it, but not if conservatives said it because that speech was hate speech. I think he set up a situation that we can show the IRS was sympathetic to. Their discovery, their targeting, their denying due process to Tea Party groups had everything to do with what they said not their right to say it. Did you find, you know, sort of any one person, you know, Lois Lerner, uh, one of her deputies, we've also heard about uh, the lawyers in Washington, who was sort of guiding this group in Cincinnati? Because as you're well aware, it's the IRS's contention and Lois Lerner's contention and the White House's contention that these were just a couple of rogue agents who decided, well, you know, we heard what the president said. He doesn't like these groups and, and we better separate them out. Well, remember, Lois Lerner said it wasn't hers and then took the fifth. Uh, and very clearly, she was pivotal to this. She was at the center of it all. We intend to have her back uh, and recognize that the committee has already voted that she waived her Fifth Amendment rights. So we intend on following up on her assertions in earlier testimony. But she wasn't alone. And one of the challenges we're going to have is to get each of the individuals in, all of whom appear to be in Washington, and find out who they talk to outside of the IRS and it's more and more clear that they received information both publicly and privately into Washington IRS and they acted on it. And I think one important thing is the people in Cincinnati, even if they had wanted and Carter Hall and others wanted to move these uh, applications forward, recommended their approval, they were not allowed to do so. You know, the other group that we're sort of still waiting to hear from are these groups that, that believe that they were subject to this undue scrutiny. And I know that there are 20 some lawsuits by Tea Party groups that waited for 18 months, 36 months, even more than that in some cases, to get their tax exempt status that progressive groups seem to be getting at a much faster rate. And we know that the, the conservative groups, according to your report, were targeted. 80% of the groups that were, were set aside were conservative groups. So where's that going? Because the administration said they wanted to hear from those people that they didn't want the IRS to do undue scrutiny. Well, they're, they're simply not being honest, I think, when the, when the White House says they want to hear from them. They put out this false uh, assumption and, and documents specifically to show that progressive groups were targeted. Our investigation and our report shows they were not targeted. Yes, there were some groups identified. Some were uh, denied for appropriate reasons. The vast majority were approved, and they were all given a timely dispensa or, uh, disposition. In the case of the Tea Party groups, many of them today still do not have approval or denial, meaning they have been denied deliberately, far greater than it, than it would have happened. Yeah. And remember, in the ordinary course, there, Carter Hall and others, career professionals have said, there was nothing new. They could decide these. But our information shows that they were constantly going back, looking for ways to essentially deny this whole category yeah. and in the meantime delaying it. But I will tell you that groups are coming forward. They're signing waivers so that we can get details of their information. Mm -hmm. And our expectation is our committee, to a great extent, wow. will be representing Tea Party groups 
in getting to the truth for them. We remember the questions they were asked, who do you pray for? What kind of books do you read? Uh, all part exactly. of the process to you know, just make sure that, that they weren't moving through the system, they were delayed in the system. I think that uh, is pretty clear from all the testimony that we've heard. I do want to get your thoughts on, on this uh, Benghazi accountability review report and, and the new findings on that. Because it, it does appear that the people who were in charge of overseeing personnel, uh, Patrick Kennedy, Elizabeth Dibble, uh, at the State Department were never asked any questions about why they would have not given extra security when they were asked for it uh, at the consulate in Benghazi. Well, you're exactly right. Our study shows the Accountability Review Board gave a complete pass to Under Secretary Kennedy, a man who, in consultation with Secretary Clinton, made the decision to keep the Benghazi facility open and was in the process of, with uh, Secretary uh, Clinton, was in the process of making Benghazi potentially a permanent consulate as the uh, ambassador was attacked. Mm -hmm. So what we found, accountability in the accountability reward, reward board didn't happen. As a matter of fact, the four people identified by the ARB, uh, all of them are on the job, none of them having lost a day's pay. Uh, so literally, even the four they identified were not held accountable. All right, and we do know uh, that Patrick Kennedy will be testifying, not to your committee, but to another committee at the top of the hour. Uh, we're going to carry that live for everybody at home uh, who is interested in this issue of Benghazi. And there are a lot of people out there who clearly uh, still are. Congressman, thank you very much. Thank we'll talk you. To you later.